Up. 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 Soraya Hamami. Wonderful indeed. Wonderful. This is going to be a very nice fight to watch. And another Southpaw Orthodox fight. Yep. Great high left kick by Kale. Great IQ on Kale. He's very, very impressive young man, hey? Lovely left kick, kick there by Kel. Kick, kick, yeah. That length of Kale, so tall. He's like he's like a mini mini George. <laughs> yeah, you're mini, mini George. Mini George. My favourite mini George was George three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to George, man. Uh, George, Thanks we love you. Thanks for the you. abusive message, George. <laughs> WBC Muay Thai World Champion. Going for the WBC Diamond Belt against yes. Jake London. Rise uh, later on this year, on, I believe 10th of December. 10th of December, yeah. Been having a chat to Riddler today about how George's prep's going, and um, sounds like a lot of fun holding pads for that guy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool that um, George's brother-in-law, the, the guy who actually taught him how to have that beautiful style, was now living in Perth and back training him at Riddler's. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, and perfect timing too, coming up to a big fight in um, four weeks' time. Yeah, for sure. Also, in four weeks' time in Sydney, our good friend Mark Jelsey is having hardcore promotion in Sydney. December 10th at the William Inglis Hotel. Uh, main event, Charlie Bubb versus Jay Tongan. That's a big one. Big, and big a lot of other fights from guys yeah. all over Australia. And the venue is actually amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. And then, yeah, like, like I said, same night, uh, Rise has the WBC Diamond Championship. And I'll push a little plug myself for my show on the 26th of November. I'll see you there. See you there. This is, this is such a nice little technical fight, hey? I believe Kale's back on that card hardcore as well. He's fighting yeah. Moo from Thai yeah. Boxing Pit. That's a big step, big step. Yeah, he might almost want to control the cuteness with Moo on that one because Moo's got some power. Moo, Moo's like an angry little man, isn't he? Very powerful, aggressive. What's coming up? in the next few months for South Australia Muay Thai Pinky? Absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> You'll be coming to Melbourne? A lot. Uh, I think our next show is an amateur show, February 5, and there's not a lot else aside from Pride's on in May next year. So, yeah. Um, a lot of people, you know, there's a few friends of mine in like my circles that have applied for their promoter's licenses or applying. If we can get maybe two or three more of us, we're going to start, you know, putting on some, trying to build up that amateur scene properly so we can do what you guys are doing in Victoria and New South Wales to to grow from the grassroots, you know, not put so much emphasis on winning an amateur fight and just doing it right 
to, to create that beautiful Muay Thai style, to have good entry-level pros, you know? Yeah, and, you know, Pinky, like, we've got amateurs tomorrow in Melbourne, um, and there's a couple of things to it there. Like, not only do you get good fighters, we've now got a bunch of ex-fighters who are officiating, and then we've got a lot of families and stuff coming yeah. and seeing Muay Thai for the first time, presented in a really nice way. There's no, like, alcohol or anything at the venue. It's perfect. They're coming, and it's just building the community up, and, yeah, man, I, I'm look, there's a bunch of you guys in Adelaide that have come and supported it, and I'm... You know, looking forward to seeing what you guys do as well. Because we, we should do a little um, team thing for um, for December. If I, I've got my uh, Matt, who I do my podcast with, he's looking at maybe sending a couple of over as well. Yeah, maybe easy. We could, we'll get like 12, 14 of us. You know, we've got a um, couple of fighters from uh, Rikers tomorrow. From Jeremy Keeping's coming. Okay, we've had uh, <laughs> Paddy down with a couple of his guys earlier in the year. Yeah. You've obviously been down. Um, yeah, Paddy's, Paddy's a good boy. He's one in my little uh, circles as well. We yeah. hang out a lot. It was really great to have him down, and you know, uh, the they, the boys fought really well. Um, looking to get some of the Sydney crew involved too. And, awesome. Um, yeah, like just build our community across Australia. Yeah, for sure. Like-minded people trying to grow Muay Thai. Like tonight. Look at this. Yeah, this how is many, good. How many of our friends are here with their fighters? How many people are here? It's it's amazing. Yeah, the Muay Thai Vic shows when my daughter fought. I was I was quite happy for my five year old son to be just running around, you know, not worried not worried about the scene and who was there and you know, drunk people and stuff. It was it was great, you know, really good event. And it's how you it's how you get good pros like this when you have a great amateur scene, you know? Exactly. <clears throat> these guys are putting on a beautiful display. And these these two boys in here are, are a product of, you know, all the hard work, um, <clears throat> Andy and and the crew at Muay Thai New South Wales have done over the years. Yeah, for sure. Like the shows development days. Is what we're yeah, the development days, the coaching seminars, everything that's happened doesn't happen by accident. No, it doesn't. There's a lot of work goes into it, and a lot of the time it is thankless, right? It's not like you make fortunes from from it. It's it's sometimes a battle, you know. Like yeah. it, but it's like everything in Muay Thai. It's not a money sport. It's it's a it's a passion and, and love sport, you know. It's Every, a you, can make, you can make money from it, you know. It's, it is possible, but not. It's not what drives ninety percent of the people in the Muay Thai scene. Exactly, and it's a it's a longer term project for it to be something where the fighters make more money, promoters make more money. Jay, we have to do these next few years. Yeah, de develop it to the growth of the sport. Hundred percent. More, more. I mean, really enjoying Kel's left kicks. Yes. They both got great IQs though, both able to avoid, both able to reply. Very tidy. Both boys very young, huge future.
Ooh. So heavy hands from Fahed. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes you just get caught watching, right? It's being in this position like where you're supposed to be talking, but you're yeah. just enjoying Muay Thai. Really interested to see what sort of weight class Kel grows into over the years. I mean, he's fighting at 54 kilos now. Probably the kind of kid you're going to be seeing getting up to the super featherweight and ending up at super lightweight, welterweight in the future. He's got the height. Nice, nice, straight into the clinch again. Both boys so talented, I eh? hope everyone at home is enjoying it as much as we are. Big swing and a miss with that elbow. <laughs> Almost took himself over the top rope. Misses that right hand as well. Yeah. Played Misses the matador and, really well. Yeah. The IQ on Kale is actually like ridiculous, hey? Oh, gorgeous tape. Beautiful slick from both of them. This is, yeah, those swing and misses. Beautiful work from these two boys. Beautiful. Fantastic. So Sorry, just, you guys expected to hear a lot of talking from us though, but I think we just sat yeah, back and enjoyed it. We literally that just watched it and enjoyed For both of these boys, what a fight! What a war! She make a man want to speak Spanish. Oh, baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges scorecards. Judge one scoring this contest 27-30. Judge two scoring this contest 28-29. Judge three scoring this contest 28-29. And your winner by unanimous points decision to the blue corner. Yeah, you